So I was going to show you guys the startup idea that I've been working on for the past few weeks, but it turns out it's going to take another week or two to get completed. So here we are. What's going on, guys? My name is Suboptimal, and today we will go over the best tech stack to learn for web development. So why am I making this video? Well, when I first started learning web development, I was completely lost with all the technologies that you know you see here on screen, like Vue.js, Postgres, React, GraphQL, TypeScript, Tailwind. You know, you got a ton of different technologies that go into building a simple web app. And when I first started, it was pretty confusing. I searched on YouTube, you know, how to get started with web development. Um, most of the videos would talk about pros and cons of using different technologies, etc., etc., but they would never really give a definitive tech stack to use. So even after watching a couple of those videos, I'd be like, okay, so now I know all of these technology stacks exist, but which one should I learn? Which one should I pick? So in this video, I'm going to do it a little bit different and actually tell you guys the best tech stack to get started with if you're getting into web development. Just as a quick overview, this talk is going to be split up into a couple parts. First, we're going to talk about who this talk is for. Then we're going to define how I'm going to select the optimal framework. You can always argue whether or not one tech stack is better or worse than another one, but I'm going to define a framework for picking the optimal uh, tech stack. And then I'll give you guys, you know, just a general overview of full stack development. And then we'll finally dive into the technologies for uh, front end, back end and database. And before we get started, I'm just gonna ask for one small favor from you guys. And that is to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. It takes me quite a bit of time to plan and edit these videos. So just a small like goes a long way in helping me and the channel out. Cool. With that out of the way, let's get started. So who is this talk actually for? I'd say that anyone who has taken maybe uh, introductory computer science in college or has taken AP computer science in high school, right? Anyone who has a little bit of knowledge about computer science who has taken the intro stuff and maybe anyone who's worked with the basics like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you want to take your uh, programming skills to the next level by building a full on web application. So maybe you've heard of technologies like MySQL and, and MongoDB and React.js, right? Like maybe you've heard of these technologies, but you never actually knew which one to pick, which one to use for your next application, how they interact with each other. So basically, I'm going to go over those things in this talk. So obviously, I'm sure you guys know that there's no perfect tech stack. But if we were to uh, set some constants in place, then we can pick a tech stack given those constants. So the two metrics that I want to uh, really focus on for this talk, and you know, this is sort of how I'm going to be picking the best tech stack, is looking at these two metrics. The first one is the actual job market, right? Are there jobs in these technologies? You know, how hot are these technologies, right? And the second is having the ability to quote unquote finish the fight. So a lot of times when you're working on any new project and you're learning any new technology, the biggest hurdle is going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be finishing the project itself, right? You're going to start, you know, one weekend, you're going to be super inspired to want to learn something and you're going to spend all Saturday learning it. And then by Sunday, you're going to be like, you know what? I don't feel like it. These two metrics are going to be very important. And I'm going to talk about how these two metrics come into play with the tech stack that I'm telling you guys to learn in this video. When you're thinking about full stack web development, it's usually these three things, right? There's the front end, then there's a back end, and then there's a database. So this is what, you know, a full stack web developer usually works with. You might be wondering, like, why do you need a database? Like, why do you need all these things to be a web developer, right? So let me just give you a sample little example, right? Say you have a to-do application. In the browser, you can use Vue.js, you can use React, you can use Angular, you can use a lot of technologies to display this. You can just do it in HTML and JavaScript. The reason you need these technologies, right, is say 
I'm using the to-do app, right? Like you you made a to-do app and I'm using that to-do app. As soon as I'm using it, you have to figure out a way to save that information, right? So say I close the app inside of Chrome. I opened the app that you made and I closed it. Now, how are you gonna store that information? Well, you need a database for that. That's one reason you need to have, you know, these like a back end and a database, right? Because you need to go from the front end and that information needs to be stored in a database so that when I next open up Chrome and oh, go to your app, I can see that data. So, you know, that's sort of the reason why you'd want a database. And why do you need a back end? Well, one example to have a back end would be to authorize a user, right? Say um, I put information on a Chrome and then I, you know, close my browser and say someone else opens up another browser, right? And then they're on a different computer. Like, how do you know which user that is? And how do you know um, whether or not to show the information that I input in there, right? So that's where like these three technologies come into play. The front end is just, you know, for displaying stuff on the web page. The back end handles a lot of logic, getting stuff from the database, and then also things like uh, authenticating authenticating users and all these other things so the database is the persistent storage basically that's what full stack development is there's a front end a back end and a database so just as a brief overview so front end frameworks the reason you need them is that they make it easy to interact with complex state so if you wanted to build a website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, that's very much possible. But once you start sort of refactoring your code and once the application gets really big, it gets pretty complex to manage the state and just like have clean code and you know have clean formatting and things like that. So that's one of the main reasons that front end frameworks exist. Um, these are some of the front end frameworks that exist like Vue, React, and Angular. Now Angular is a bit old. It was something that was released in, uh, I think it was in like 2010s is when it got started. Um, but the top two frameworks these days are between uh, React and Vue.js. So, you know, we're going to pick one of these frameworks. And along with these frameworks, it's important to note that um, there's front end frameworks and then there's UI libraries. So. Uh, when you create with front-end frameworks, that's actually not enough to create a good web app. Because when you say you create like a to-do app and it just has like some basic HTML elements, that's just gonna look really bad. No matter how much of a huge problem that your you know front-end framework is solving, if the UI just doesn't look good, then people aren't gonna wanna use it. So you're gonna need to uh, hook up your front end with you know some amount of uh, UI frameworks and so that's what I have here on the right side we got bootstrap material UI Balma and Tailwind CSS so there's a ton more you know UI frameworks that you can use but when you think about front end just think about having a framework and then uh, configuring it with a specific UI library so that you can not only manage state but also have good UI while doing so. So now that we you know have an understanding of some front-end frameworks let me tell you guys which one is my preferred choice for you. In my opinion, the best front-end framework to learn is going to be React.js. The reason I'm going to say React is because almost every single company, every FANG company, every startup, almost every company out there is using React right now. And the reason is it's you know it's been built uh, with Facebook, so Facebook uh, created React and. So they were able to popularize React inside of the entire industry. And there's a ton of useful libraries that come with React, like Next.js and Redux for state management. And so React is basically the king of front end frameworks as of 2021 and probably even 2022. Now, there are a few up and coming ones like Vue. So if you're maybe a freshman or sophomore in college, then perhaps you would be it, it would be better for you to learn something like Vue.js. In most other situations, React is going to be what you're going to want to learn. And pairing with React is I'm going to actually go out, go out on a limb here and say that Tailwind CSS is, um, in my opinion, the best UI to pair with you know, React or even Vue.js or any other framework. So the premier choice comes down to React and Tailwind. 
So the next thing to look at is backend frameworks. There are a few that come to mind. There's Ruby on Rails, there's Golang, there's Flask and Django, uh, which is basically backends that you can write in Python. And then there's Node.js. So obviously all of like a lot of companies use these types of backend, right? So I'm pretty sure like Reddit was built on a version of Flask. I think uh, Khan Academy used Django at one point and then it switched to Golang. I'm pretty sure uh, Pinterest or something like that use Django. There's a lot of companies that use Ruby on Rails. Uh, I think Netflix uses Node.js. So, you know, these are pretty popular backend frameworks. But which one should you pick and why should you pick it? And so my premier choice is going to be Node.js. So the reason I'm going to say Node.js is because of the uh, amount of effort it takes to uh, context switch. So ideally, you want to put in the least amount of effort and get in the most amount of results. So let's take a look at these frameworks, right? If you built something like Discord, you guys know Discord, right? You know Discord. When you're building a app that is reaching in, in millions of people, really, right? Then you need to do something that is super performant. And, and that's when you might use a language like Golang for your backend, right? Because um, Golang is just super fast and you just need it for making sure that everything is running at pace with the number of users you have. But when you're working as, uh, as you know, just trying to learn an application, right? It's better to work on technologies that are easy to get started with. And the reason um, Node.js is the easiest to get started with is because things that you work on the front end use similar technologies as Node.js. And that technology is NPM. So NPM is a package manager. And this package manager is something that you can use in React to get utility libraries like Lodash, like DateTime. So basically very core libraries, things like that. Um, you know, you can get using NPM and set it up in React or Vue. And you can also do this uh, similar thing in on the back end. So when you do, when you use your back end framework with Node.js, what you're doing is you're minimizing the amount of context switching that you do. Just imagine your front end was written in, you know, React JS or Vue JS, and then now your back end is written in Python, right? So the amount of context switching that you have to do when you are switching the way you think from JavaScript to Python or from JavaScript to Golang or from JavaScript to Ruby on Rails is a bit too much. And that's going to make you put in more effort than you need to. And so if you put in more effort than you need to, it is a less likely chance that you'll finish the project that you're trying to work on. So for that reason, the best backend is going to be Node.js. So now that we've picked our front end and our back end, let's take a look at the databases. So first thing I want to mention that there's two types of databases. Um, there's SQL databases and then there's no SQL databases. So SQL databases, this is where you do like the SQL queries. I'm sure you've all heard of them in any way, like select star from table A, join on table B, blah, 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 right? So you, I'm sure you've heard of these types of queries. And so that's what, you know, SQL databases are. They require you to put in a little bit of extra work up front because you put in that upfront work. They have some consistent, they have some uh, guarantees. They can guarantee that there's not going to be any redundancy and, and things like that. And then there's no SQL databases like MongoDB. The, the, the important thing to mention is that, you know, both of these types of databases are used very widely in production. So, you know, almost every, you know, big company that you know of is going to be using a SQL database and some form of NoSQL database. It's not like if you pick one, you're sort of pigeonholing yourself into not being able to get a job on the other end of things. With that being said, which one would I recommend that you choose? My recommendation for the best database is going to be MongoDB. And this is sort of a uh, it's actually a hot take, I guess you could say, because uh, most people in, in the tech industry prefer SQL databases, like no questions asked. And in a way, I do too. But there's one main reason that 
I, I am saying MongoDB is a better choice. And that is because of Mongo Atlas. So basically the MongoDB company, they give you these free databases that you can use. You just have to log into their website and then uh, it starts at $0 a month. And so using these databases, you can store, I think like five gigabytes of data completely for free. So, you know, you're not like, unless the project that you made takes off so much that, you know, you're, you're, you're taking up more than five gigabytes of data for some reason, right? Like you're not going to be paying anything and it's super easy to get started with. So that's one of the main reasons I'm going to pick MongoDB as the best database to learn, um, because it's just easy to get started with. There's no hassles, right? You don't have to set up a schema. You don't have to use a uh, ORM, which is, I think it's like an object relationship mapper or something. Basically, when you're working with um, things like Postgres or MySQL, you're gonna have to add, install extra packages into your backend so that the backend can interact with, um, you know, with your database. But basically, it's just a lot easier with MongoDB. I would prefer that you start off with MongoDB just so that you understand how to build, you know, from full stack, from, you know, the React front end with the Tailwind UI to the back end to MongoDB, like the whole full stack experience. Once you have that, create, update, delete, whatever, whatever, right? Once you have that application up and running, um, then you can swap these out, right? Then you can take out, replace Tailwind maybe with Bootstrap to see how that works. Maybe you can replace Node.js with Golang, see how that works. Maybe you can replace MongoDB with Postgres. So what I'm saying here is this is the best tech stack to start off with, right? Because it's going to keep it easy as possible for you. Everything's going to be in JavaScript. Everything's going to be super easy to configure. And there are dozens and dozens of tutorials on this exact sort of tech stack. And yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you guys were able to uh, realize, you know, what I was trying to say with the best tech stack. Obviously, there's no such thing as a best tech stack, but given the constraints that we added to this video, given the fact that um, most of you guys are probably beginners or someone who is trying to get into the job market, right? Um, given these constraints, I was able to give you the most optimal tech stack to learn so that you learn the most amount with like the least amount of friction and you can build your projects and you can you know you can accomplish what you set out to do whether that's getting you know a six figure salary job or or just you know finishing a project and just having that under your belt right and if you guys did enjoy the video then just be sure to like the uh, hit the like button and to consider subscribing for more suboptimal content about web development and startups thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time